where might I find these open source risk exposures across all of my software applications? So we have a third category here called open source safety, which is essentially performing what's called software composition analysis. You may have heard that term SCA. That's built into part of the intelligence available in this control tower. Again, we're starting to get familiar with this dashboard. It's recommending specific actions, like five applications where you need immediate attention. There's lots of issues from uh, open source risk 11 where the primary issue is vulnerabilities, three where the primary issue is some potential legal risk. Log4j was a very, or still is, a very popular open source library that was used in a lot of software systems. Right? It's very common. And about a year and a half ago, there was discovered a critical vulnerability in log4j, and there was this kind of mad scramble globally for organizations to figure out where is it being used, what version is being used, how is this affecting my application portfolio. Well, because this technology is taking that uh, you know, high-level view across all applications, you know, again, just sticking with that control tower metaphor, we can simply come in here, and organizations that were using this technology we're able to rest a little bit easier uh, at night because they could simply come in here, type in log4j, and lo and behold, they'll see it pop up in the list. So guess what? We are using log4j in our application portfolio. Where are we using it? Well, it popped up in that first row, all the way to the right here. I see we're using it in 18 applications. I click on that. I could see here's all 18 applications where my development teams happen to use log4j, the versions that they're using, and the vulnerabilities that have been identified within that uh, set of applications. So in a few seconds, we were able to very quickly triage our exposure to something like log4j, that was a major industry issue about a year and a half ago, and start to drill in and see how to address that. So uh, let's go down to one application. Now we're looking at the open source or third party composition of this software application. And in this case, we'll see that we are using 156 third-party components. I get a summary view of the security vulnerabilities. So, you know, how many critical vulnerabilities are in the open source components used in this software application? Licensing issues. We'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, but one way to kind of take a look at this is if I pick one, for example, there's a good one here I was looking at earlier here, this one. So this is each of the open source components that were automatically detected being used by the coding of this software application. If I click on one of them, it'll bring up a timeline. It'll show me every version of this open source component and the characteristics associated with each version. If I click here, I'll see the one my development team is currently using in my application. It's a bit of an extreme example, but you'd be surprised how often we see stuff like this. This one is using a version that's about nine years old. There's obviously a critical security vulnerability in that version. But if I were to upgrade using this same open source component, but I were to upgrade to the most recent version, which was released earlier this year, you'll see that those vulnerabilities have been removed. Now, it wouldn't be very practical to do that for all 156 components manually, so we have built some automation into the technology where if you look at these two columns here, it's automatically recommending the uh, safest versions of components upgrade to when an unsafe open source component is detected in an application. And this data could be automatically, for example, pushed into a JIRA ticketing system or what have you so that uh, the remediation steps can be assigned to a team or team members. Now we talked about licensing. Just because open source software is free does not mean it doesn't come with strings attached. It is freely, it, you're able to use open source software when building custom applications for free, pretty much 99.9% .9 of the time. But one of those strings that comes attached is a license. Most open source software components have a legal license attached to them that governs how that component can be used inside of a custom application uh, and the legal requirements. Now most of us are not IP legal experts, so what we try to do here is automatically um, measure or, or identify a risk level. You'll see some color coding there. We're gonna take a look at one that's red. So I'll scroll down to this one here. And if I click on this license, which was detected in a specific component called Unicorn that my development team is using in this software, 
This is a license called GNU General Public License V2.0. It's actually a quite common open source license that's attached to an open source library. It comes with what's called strong copyleft language, if you could see that in the header there. You'll see the actual license text. So again, most of us are not legal experts, so what we do is we create a little rule book here that is a more user-friendly approach, and it color codes what the license allows, what the license doesn't allow in red, what you must do if you're using a component with this license, and some additional properties. Right? That rule book is basically interpreting the legal text and creating that uh, color coding for you. What does strong copy left mean? For those of you that may not be familiar with that term, if this open source component is used by one of your developers in a piece of software, a piece of custom software, and it's using this license with that strong copy left language, that's a kind of legal language, it could mean that the entire software system that's using this component now legally must be shared out back to the community as open source, including all of the source code for the entire system, if you're following the legal requirements of this license. You can imagine how that could be risky for certain organizations and certain types of applications that are under development, and this is why these types of risks embedded in custom software could be very risky for an organization. And what we're seeing is different types of legal action. In the past, when organizations got caught for not following these licenses, there was often some kind of financial settlement that was being sought. Now, more recently, we're seeing cases where what's being sought is not some kind of financial settlement, but that the organization actually follows the requirements of the license and open sources their software application, sharing the source code. There was a recent television manufacturer got hit with a lawsuit on something like this uh, less than a year ago. So you can imagine how that could be quite risky for an organization. 